All right, thank you everyone for coming to our meeting this evening. Um, I would ask if there are any agenda additions or deletions. Anybody have any? Mr. Chairman, under the highway, I'd like to add to open the paving bids that didn't get added to the agenda. Okay. I'll second that. Is there any yays or nays out there? Any conversation before I call a call? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, any other additions or deletions? If that's the case, uh, I would ask for approval of the regular, excuse me, June 28th minutes. So moved. Second. Is there any changes, any corrections? Well, I thought they looked nice. Uh, All right, good job, Katie, on the by the way. Thank you to Heidi, who took the notes for me at the last meeting. Okay, <laughs> Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anyone against that? Hear none. So pass. Uh, highway Road Commissioner's report. The uh, just a report. We've been trying to get ready for paving on uh, Walker Mountain Road, cleaning ditches, replacing road driveway culverts and whatnot. Um, stone lining some of the ditches. And hopefully we can uh, accept a bid tonight for paving. All right. Uh, mowing's been ongoing on roadside mowing. I saw these are to the east side of town. Yes, it's almost one. done. And okay. some of the west side of town got started, and we'll be over there this coming week. Um, I did have a couple folks that were concerned about mowing on. This side, yeah, out by Cordline Road and a couple of places there. And uh, I tried to explain to them that we had some priorities. Uh, however, as you just mentioned, you're going to get that. Yep. All right, so. We've been pretty busy with trying to get some of the projects finished up and especially for the paving. Mm -hmm. Well, that was my uh, explanation to two people that uh, given the fact that we have to have all the ditching done and stuff, especially on Cordline Road, because we are going to do some paving. Uh, we want that all done. On the, on, no. um, on Walker Mountain, Mountain Road. Road. Yes, excuse me. Um, also, we took delivery of the new excavator last week. And I did. had a radio installed in it today. Yeah. Did you guys test it out yet? We used it some in the sand pile just to move some sand and stuff yeah. and reshape How clean, you like it? clean up the yard and it seemed to work pretty good. Yeah. basically to get kind of used to it i went down and checked it out really nice piece of equipment so It'd be a nice looking machine yeah see how it works <laughs> um <laughs> do we need a motion to post the old excavator tonight uh we can talk about that um well we can do it now yeah, right on the highway i mean we're, here. We, we're gonna list it on craigslist way like correct like we did done with the trucks right <clears throat> the 550 and like that mm -hmm. we, so, go ahead. so I'll make a motion that we authorize the uh, road commissioner to list the used excavator on Craigslist and seek to get the best dollars we can for it. Should we um, specify that? Um, How about a time frame? Yeah, I would. Can we do it so we can actually open bids next meeting two weeks? Or is that pushing? A lot of times on Craigslist, uh, it's pretty active right off the bat. Yeah, so I, yeah, I would think next meeting we could Fine. potentially have something done in two weeks. If we have at least two bids. But yeah, I mean, it'd be nice to, yeah. But, I mean, list it on Craigslist and, like, I mean, it seems like, I know we had one of the trucks for a while, but it seems like the other one sold pretty quickly when we got it posted and got it listed. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, I'll just stand by my motion that... The road commissioner be authorized to post it with the hopes of maybe we can finalize something next meeting. All right, is it second. a second? I'll second that. Bob beats you. <laughs> All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Gorge uh, Road. Gorge Road. Parking. Okay, um, this is, I do not 
up to date on this part. Okay. We have, uh, 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 would you like to stand up, state your name, please? I'm Carol Tashi, and I actually live in Wallingford, not Clarendon, so <laughs> carpetbagger. <laughs> uh. um, and I had a conversation with Michael last week. Um, so for <laughs> forever, it seems like, um, Dennis and I, after our chores, after farming, and after work, whatever, um, we have head down Gorge Road, parked on one of those little cutouts, <laughs> um, you know, walk <coughs> through the woods, pulled off in the river, um, you know, you all know that's like the treasure of our of this town. Um, and I got a parking ticket. <laughs> and I was amazed at getting a parking ticket after so many years of doing that. And so I'm not fighting the ticket, I paid the ticket. I called the sheriff's department and they said, you know, it was um, a decision that the board had made. So I called Michael. Michael was a share member, so I knew Michael. That's why I, I called Ma Michael. And um, we talked about I understand why. I understand that there were drugs and partiers and kids making ruckuses and all those kinds of things. But my understanding was that was happening probably exclusively in the evenings, you know, once it was dark. And so I would love for the board to consider or reconsider allowing, um, and I would consider that off street because, you know, I think some of that's probably you know, cutoffs that the, the, the town has done, but I think some of it was also when the culverts were put in and when the road was closed. Um, you know, and you're parking really off the road. It's not, it's, I don't think it's a danger at all. You know, you're not sticking out or anything. Um, so I'd love to have the board um, consider um, maybe the parking ban being at night um, to allow people like us who are just, you know, regular folks who want to take a dip in the, the river during our short summer season, um, that maybe there could be a parking ban at night to prevent the kids from partying and whatever other kinds of things cause problems um, so that other people could swim. And I know that the parking area down, you know, it's ironic because the parking area down at the, you know, at the, um, at the end of the road um, you know, <laughs> that's probably more dangerous. You know, all the cars are spilled because that gets really busy that the cars spill out. We tend to not swim down there because that's where there's kids and there's families. And it's just, you know, it's not a place where you can just walk in, jump in the water and jump out. Um, Michael reminded me that for a long time, people were not wearing bathing suits and <laughs> that was causing yeah. problems. You do remember that part. <laughs> yeah, we're a couple of old timers and yeah. so I don't think that's a problem for us. Um, and uh, yeah, so I just don't know what it takes to reconsider that. Um, is that a, a, you know, a board decision? Is that something that I could talk more about? I'd be happy to answer any questions. Well, quite honestly, um, the reason we did that was because of the daytime parking. Really? Oh yeah, it was, it was one from one end of the road to the other. It was really bad that for a long one. time. Have you been down recently? Because and I have alerted the now. I have alerted the sheriff's department on several occasions that there is still some going on down there. Yeah, daylight. Maybe, maybe that was my red car. <laughs> no, I was I looked at that recently. Yeah. Yeah, definitely this past summer I've already called him a is couple that, different times. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't that all now, Vermont? National Forest or whatever it's all isn't, the, isn't it's all, all the way up through now? It's all in good service, yes. Yes. So, yeah. truthfully, probably the the proper course of action is to petition the state for another parking area if they want to put one in up there, right? Well, initially, when the River Conservancy Group got that, that's when they took the bridge down. Yeah. And then um, the state. That, there was a parking area there because mm -hmm. Dave used to call us all the time. Yeah. Uh, but then the state came in and they looked at, you know where the cars are parked now? Then there's a little plateau up there. Mm -hmm. That's where they were going to expand the parking area up right. in there and make that a, a <coughs> another resource. Um, there was some talk about up where the um, where they built Looks like Fort Ticonderoga up there. That's straight away. Sex oh, you're talking about with the airport built there. Yeah. Runway. There was uh, initially some pull-offs there, but the road was widened, and cars used to park in there too. Before we mm. did that, that was years ago. I oh mean, yeah, a long time. Ago. Well, I remember when I first came on the board, it was a 
big issue, and yep. we had a lot of conversation, yep. and there was a lot of tickets at that point because we were having, and I know back then I was driving it almost every day, and I remember yeah. commenting mm-hmm. of what it looked like and how much yeah. trouble we were having because somebody was going to get hit or somebody there was going to be problems back then. The biggest problem was just on this end, just what that real sharp turn is, mm-hmm. cars. There was a, like a, a little road that used to go down in there, mm-hmm. and then cars started parking in there, mm-hmm. and then when they couldn't park in there, they just left it on the road. Yeah. So that was already narrow, mm-hmm. and then with the cars there. So that that part of, we, we really wanted to close that down real quick. And then it was suggested because <coughs> before the <coughs> state approved uh, <coughs> their runway area and stuff like this, uh, the road wasn't as wide as it is now. So cars was on that straightaway. There was a lot of cars there. Then a the guy had a shooting range over there, remember yeah. that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so finally we said, yeah. you know, we're gonna have to do something. When the River Conservancy Group came in after the bridge was taken down, and I don't know if that land that you're talking about runs all the way up to the You'd have to look on the tax map. Yeah, the tax map would show us the whole corridor. I thought it was too. Oh, I yeah, thought that they ended up in the whole corridor from Route Seven to Covered Bridge. Well, yep. um, could be wrong, but I thought. I'm pretty sure. I, I, I thought like you. There's did, a guy who's that. an author who used to have his shooting range over there, and he owned <clears throat> part uh, on the airport south side. side. No, no. Oh, on the, on the side? south side. Huh. He owned just before the bridge. He owned some. Uh, land in there. No, it wasn't before the bridge. It was a, a little bit. The guy lives. Uh, I can't remember what the heck the road name is over there. It's su- not Susan Lane. What is it? Brenda Lane. It's something like Brenda that. Lane. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. One there. And, and he owned all the way down to there, and he used to shoot his weapons down there all the mm. time. And neighbors used to come and complain and all this kind of stuff. But anyway, long story short, it's not. There was only 11 acres that was by the River Conservancy Group. And that was just as you went across the bridge, the old bridge that used to be part of Route 7. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's uh, four or five acres there. And then uh, on both sides, you know, there's a house over there, right? Mm-hmm. Just past that house, that's where the Conservancy Group uh, had some land. So I don't believe it's the whole length. I <laughs> think it's only on more on this end but we can check that out Uh, so i i mean i for one feel like we just got a handle over there i don't know if i'm ready to loosen up on the parking restrictions as as one person on the board i gotta be honest i feel like we we really in the last year and a half really have just gotten it under control in my opinion so that's where i'm at I, i don't know if i'm I'm ready to loosen up yet, just because it was well, such a problem before. Well, the reason I was I notified the sheriff's department a couple of different times was because there are now pull-offs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they've redeveloped some pull-offs there, and I've seen as many as a dozen cars there coming down there. I think. Is there a time of day where you're seeing? Uh, any time during the day. We're usually Mo- going like after you know after a long day of work and right. you're hot and sweaty right. and you're like oh, because there's hard. I mean, and again, you know, I mean, when you go down versus when I go down, I mean, there's hardly any cars, and I don't know if that's the issue or not. I just wondered if mm-hmm. there's a way in which, um, you know, that it's such a wonderful place, mm-hmm. right? It's such a beautiful place. And, you know, Michael was saying, yeah, you know, so get a whole bunch of people together and somebody drops you off. And that's great if you're going for the day, <laughs> but if you just, you know, when you've, you've had a long day and you've mm-hmm. worked and you're sweaty and you're hot and you're like, oh, I can just five minutes I can just go and take a dip and come out and I didn't know if there's a way in which that could be supported and I, I don't want to open up a whole Pandora's box obviously I'm just thinking I mean we've been swimming there for I feel like forever mm-hmm. um, and, and I was just very surprised yeah. to get a ticket <laughs> I mean that, that park no parking sign looks like it's been there since you know 1963 I guess yeah. the kids are sh- were shooting at it or somebody was shooting yeah, at it one that's one of the old ones. Ones. Yeah. <laughs> That one should have been it was actually, down. if you, I think there's five signs that say no parking along the roadside, yeah. up and back. Maybe. If you, yeah. There's four or five. We've we've replaced them at least yeah. twice yeah, since I've been on the board because yeah. they've been destroyed. Cause, you know, we go up there and we do green up day up there and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And 
you know, I mean, because there's trash. I mean, it's kind of gross. That was one of the other reasons, too, because there's so much trash. Yeah, that, but I yeah, feel like... Up there. That's when Pat Leahy came down to help us mm -hmm. clean that yeah. out when he was running for office at one point. Really? Yeah. But, like, yeah. I think of the reason why we go down there and do Green Up Day. I mean, you know, we live on Creek Road, and so we do Green Up Day on Creek Road, but... You know, we've met other people up there, and they all say, oh, yeah, you know, I swim up here, I swim up here. It's just such a beautiful place, and it just seems like by making no parking in those cutouts, and again, I appreciate, you don't want dozens and dozens of cars, um, but making it, you're kind of, making no parking eliminates the opportunity for just regular folk to go down there and go for a quick dip and cool off, and, you know, our summer's so short, and so any opportunity. But I would... Uh, like to suggest that maybe uh, two things. One, first of all, if we can look who owns the properties um, on both sides. The state, obviously, where the water is, they own that. Right. Uh, no argument there. Right. Uh, yeah. But uh, especially on that straightaway area on the west or eastern side, I. That's all the conservancy because I went through that last year with the all the trash that was dumped there. Yeah. yeah. So they wanted us as a town crew to go all the way out to the river and pick it up up our that, right away. That's yeah. right. I remember that now. And I checked into it and I went to the forestry and nobody would ever do anything. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's any consolation, we did. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty clean up there. Now. I mean, you know, it's it's cleaner. I can't cleaner. say it's mm -hmm. perfectly clean. But I wonder at yeah. some point, let's do a little bit more research on that uh, I'm not fooling and saying yeah let's try and get a parking area up there because I was part of the board when we did have some really serious trouble mm -hmm. up there, yeah. especially yeah. with the drugs and I'm not inclined so much to uh, say yeah let's go go for it and stuff I would like to do a little bit more research land wise who owns it and stuff and then if at some point the town decides well maybe there's a couple locations with if, if we work with the state where we can put some parking areas in uh, maybe put some signs up that say no parking after 5 p.m. in these during these months and you know I don't want to just totally mm -hmm. stop this conversation right, I appreciate but in that. the same token where I think I stand on it right now is to say that we've had some issues mm -hmm. and if we can figure out a way to change those issues then mm -hmm. maybe we can sit down as a town community and come up with a thing but as of right now for me I think you know what we have there and legally because a couple of those signs are destroyed again I wonder legally if you're parking there and they give you a ticket yeah. even though it says the policy says no parking sure. but you can't see the signs because they're destroyed right. maybe there's a legal issue there i, I mean know. i didn't fight the ticket obviously oh. i mean it was 15 dollars, and so yeah. you know i mean but i can't afford to spend 15 dollars every time to go for a dip <laughs> <laughs> True. um mm -hmm. it, can you it, does anybody have any suggestions on just what we might do or what you know, just again, regular people who just want to go up there. Is there a time of the day, Rick, that um, you would say, "Oh, so Carol and Dennis go up at three o'clock because"? Well, if it's hot, yeah, it's all day long. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. Um, if it's raining, obviously there's not that many. <laughs> but my own cousins got tickets up there at the head of the falls. They were panning for gold, yeah. and they actually found some. But they didn't get enough to pay the ticket. Yeah, no, fifteen dollars <laughs> is a lot of money if you're just going so, in for a tip. So even they got one, and they parked right by this darn sign. And there's so there's not a time of the day that you would say not really. You know, the and, sheriff's and patrolling certain times because you, that's when you're most. They just happen to be it. yeah. Uh, I mean the, the the gorge has a dusk to dawn curfew, mm -hmm. which has has not been adhered to either. They, they yeah. people go in there anyway. The only other suggestion that I would have is maybe like if you're if you, you said you know the people up there is if you could they would let you park at their house. I, I don't know them. I was thinking of knocking on some doors, but and just in yeah, seeing if not in your head, yeah. Seeing if they would let you park in their driveway, right. That's you know, what I was and actually and that way you're not in the no parking zone. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. there's like it looks like there's like there's big 
trucks or uh, you know aren't there like some up by hands up by hands is no, yeah, yeah. Nope. is that a good person to ask yes. <laughs> I mean a, anybody along I mean I just there. don't know them and so mm-hmm. you know that thing goes well get hold of me and I tie you up with a sun mark which was on the end of the road here. really mm-hmm. okay maybe can I call you and sure. okay so Mark Hansen Mark his name is Mark uh, Hans Hans okay so maybe Dennis so I could give you a call? Mm-hmm. Okay. And I'm more than happy, I mean, we're more than happy to do what you, you know, if you need some help in terms of figuring it out, you know, I'm more than happy to go up there every day and check to see how many people are up there. Yeah. Or, again, it's such a short season, so. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. All right, well. Thank, well, you. thank you for giving. Good start to a discussion. Okay. okay. Thank you. <coughs> All right. On okay. um, the rest of my report, I'd like to push along the paving bids. I think that's next anyway. Yeah. Yep. Excuse me. You got them to open up? Heidi, is that what you meant by open? <clears throat> Katie, not Heidi. Jesus. Let you guys go with them. That's separate. That's the paving contract. Oh, look at this. Pass that up to Rick. And all these folks uh, are aware of the length that we want to. Yes. Yeah. In my I don't. The section of road is probably one of the worst sections we're going to be ever doing a hope, with all the belling and stuff, and the corners being built up to eliminate the crowns that are in the corners and stuff. So it's it's not hard, hard, but it's going to be the estimates of tonnage is somewhat difficult to actually figure out until you start really laying it out to build up the corners and stuff and it might take a little bit more material than calculator or even less. No. So the thing to look at is really the arena pay. Yep. And like just as a reminder, we were awarded $184,000 for this paving project. That's what this is? Yeah. Or was? <laughs> yeah, that's just the grant agreement with the state that it doesn't have to. Yeah, do your the piece. two low bids are these right over here. That's the high one. Yep. I believe. Yeah. I did put it. Yeah, I think you're going to find that's the high bid. <laughs> This is the grant, yep. Yeah, so I guess we better announce some prices here. Get them when cash passes it back. Mm-hmm. I didn't see the third one. Wilk. Yeah. <clears throat> trying to see the proton prices. Did you see this one? Yet? No, I haven't seen it. Okay. The only one I've seen is one cash is yet. It's on the little. Third one there that nobody's looking at. Uh, this one right here. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, please. Um. P. 
you ready? Do you want to announce to the public what they are so we get the word out here? Yeah, go ahead. I'm reading. Okay. Um, so I think I've got everybody's written down here. So, um, and just going by um, the square yard and the tonnage prices, just to start. That's we we obviously we can rattle off the final numbers, but that's a starting point. Um, to see where the different companies came in. Um, so for Reclaim um, and the grinding of the roads, Pike's Reclaim uh, per square yard price is $1.50. Wilkes came in at $1.15 and Fuller's is $1.25. And then, of course, where the bulk of our money goes is the tonnage of asphalt. So the asphalt price per ton for the different companies, Pike is in at $72.15, Wilk is in at $66.55, and Fuller is in at $65.90. So those are the breakdown of the various pricings yeah. for um, the rates. Yes, you have a recommendation after hearing this because you know the folks that are doing this. Did you see that one, Josh? Sixty-five cents. I'm just trying to. <coughs> Ian Fuller being the least expensive per ton, but up a little bit, ten cents for the grinding more per square yard. But the grinding's only. I didn't actually down the grinding yardage <clears throat> therefore my opinion is to go with the uh, fuller the $65.90 which is the least expensive it's a touch more it's 10 cents more for per square yard grinding but the grinding is a lowest a low input of the whole project yeah, yeah if you understand where the bulk I, the bulk of the, the bulk of it cost is, all, is in the and asphalt itself. and that's what I just figured it up six I erased it. Sixty-five ninety a ton. Yeah. Well, yep. sixty-five yeah. ninety for Fuller. Sixty-six fifty-five minus the uh, sixty-five ninety. There's sixty-five cents difference. We're gonna pay. Yeah. Sixty-five cents less per ton. Per ton on Fuller's, but he's fifteen. He's ten cents more on the grinding, which. The total bill will still be cheaper, even though we paid the extra ten cents for the grinding because that is the lowest input of the th of the whole project. So my recommendation to go with Fuller at sixty five dollars and ninety cents, a dollar twenty five per square yard for grinding. So moved. Is there a second for I'll discussion. All right. Is there any further discussion on this? And once again, it's uh, a grant out there for how much was that? 184000 Yeah, 184. So that's... Would any of that to be signed by cash? Or uh, it looks like Mike. Okay. I was yeah. actually, I was going to, when we finish this, I'll make a motion on this. All right. All right, so there's been a motion made, seconded. We've had some discussion. Um, if there's no other discussion, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, we're going to notify all three folks. Mr. Chairman, I'll further make the motion that you, on behalf of the board, sign off on our paving grant, grant uh, for the Class 2 roadway program. Um, the grant in total of $184,000 on behalf of the town. I second it. Okay, is there any further discussion? All right, all in favor of motion, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? And That's not now. There you go, Mikey. All right. And thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Uh, Cash, do you have anything else under highway? That's all I have. This is seeing as we have some public here, anybody from the public have any questions? Yes. I was just curious what part of Walker Mountain you're going to pay. We're paving at four-way of Creek Road. 
all the way up Walker Mountain to East Temeth Road okay. as well one shot deal instead of three different breaks like it has been in the past that's, that's, well, and we're, that's needed so that's and up good. on the above say Loomis's Cub, Cub Cadet dealer above there that mm -hmm. sharp corner yeah we're actually gonna lift up that outside so it don't roll to the wrong side We're to Gail and Andrea. Short and sweet. <laughs> Short and sweet. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. Nothing else then. Nothing. Okay. okay. <clears throat> All right. Warrants are floating and drifting. They're over here. Uh, guest Gail Akazi and Andrea McCormick. <laughs> Have at it. I just want to. <clears throat> mention since we didn't get any notice of it through the planning or the zoning um, our last meeting was on the 25th of May and apparently um, crushed rock uh, through um, Casella's is going for an act 250 a minor application to change pretty much everything um, uh, they had a uh, site visit that no one in town knew about. Um, they had a pre-hearing conference at the West Strutland. It was virtual, except you could meet at the West Strutland town clerk's office to attend, but no one in the town had notification of that. So to my knowledge, no one in the town, either planning, zoning, or select board, really has um, given any feedback to this project. Now, all five of you are on this side of town and unfortunately or fortunately <laughs> you're not over there with Crushed Rock and we've been, um, Crushed Rock has been pretty much, I've been there since 87, I think Crushed Rock went in 1986 and they pretty much stayed with the same parameters, the same hours of operation with the crusher every five or, uh, five or six hours, five days a week um, from nine to three and they operate Monday through Friday with the crushing and they can they can haul on Saturday mornings at 9 to 12. But they want to change all of that. They want, they're limited with their trucks right now through their Act 250 and our conditional use permit in the town. And to be really honest, I haven't looked at any of this in 10 years because um, the last thing that came across was the um, asphalt plant application. And that was more than 10 years ago long time ago so I'm, con I'm pretty concerned with truck traffic and days of the week operation we're used to the noises and stuff I'm, I'm up a mile from that I don't know if you know where I live I'm almost to the old hotel and when I stand in my backyard it's like an amphitheater effect it's like it's right next to me one good thing in this application the minor application they're doing is that they want to do some noise mitigation on the crusher and I'm all in favor of that part of their minor application. I just don't want to see the hours of operation expand for the crusher. Um, Is that what they're asking for most? Yeah, the I have. Or? It's a really simple. All the, the blasting, the operations of the cars. This is a really simple project overview. <coughs> and in it, they have current and what they want. So I just made, it's only four pages. Like I said, I haven't visited Bam. this. In well, a long time. See. There's three pages there, double-sided, <coughs> double and um, the last page is how I found all the information. I went to the ANR website, ANR. Dot, well, I think it's n ANR. Vermont. Gov, and the last page shows you that there's a whole lot more information online. Actually, they can't have the Act 250 in Rutland because John Casella is on the commission for District 1. So um, a Susan Baird in District 5 is going to handle it. And I spoke with her, and she was very helpful. And I spoke with her after the pre-hearing conference because, like I said, I didn't know anything about it. Andy had called me a day or so before that, and Walt Fabian had mentioned it to her. And the day of the pre-hearing conference, Annette Smith, uh, Vermonters for a Clean Environment, called and said, how come you're not at this pre-hearing conference? And I said, what pre-hearing conference? Right. 
I didn't know anything about it, but it put everything together that Andy had mentioned the night before. And I basically just coming here today to tell you there's a lot of neighbors in the neighborhood and we decided that it was better just for a couple of us to come down, tell you about it. Oh, and the other thing is, there's not even a notice. It might be there now because I mentioned it to Gloria. All Act 250 permits, and this was the application went in in March, and we've had meetings, zoning and planning, and there's nothing in the mail. I'm the clerk of the zoning and the and the uh, planning commission, and we've received nothing. I was going to say, you, so you guys hadn't even gotten that? Nothing. Okay. Zero. Nothing. And this pre-hearing, before I go here, the pre-hearing was held in Westside? Yeah. Yeah. But they're not... I mean, they're impacted, sure, because a lot of... The traffic... Most of the traffic goes... <coughs> but not the operations. North. No. The whole thing is in Clarendon. It's really kind of a slap in the face. Yeah, they get the traffic, the most of it. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So and you can see in there that they want to change. They really don't want, they don't want to have to have an open house, which I, I don't think I've ever attended their open house. They don't want to have to do a five-year reporting. They want it to be like, what, 25, 35 years, something like that. Well, today they blasted. They're supposed to set off a, a, an alarm whistle. Never. Never Yeah, we don't, we don't get any of they that. They blast, you know. Yeah. And you get the noise, and then, and like I said, I'm a mile up. I, I am getting new windows. I have gentleman at the back that But our windows just rattle. You can feel it come right through. And that's over a mile away. Gail is a, a gentleman. I just wanted to introduce myself. I, I apologize for not doing it ahead of time, but I'm John Casella <laughs> here on behalf of Cell Construction. I saw that you guys were on the agenda, so I just wanted to join to answer any questions that, that any of you have. Well, so. thank you. Well, how come this was held down in West Rutland um, and, so and no notification held, to the town? It was held virtually because it was when it was scheduled, it was prior to all the COVID restrictions being lifted. So it was a virtual meeting that was noticed, and they used the West Rutland town hall as a place for Susan Baird to to sit, so I'm, I'm not exactly sure why it was West Rutland. That wasn't that wasn't our choice. That was Act 250's decision. But the hearing itself was a virtual hearing. I would like to make a comment on that. I mean, given the fact that it's in the whole project is in Clarendon, I think going forward, now we may have enough guests at that meeting where it wouldn't be good here but we have the um, community center by the elementary school and I think that if you folks get in touch with Katie or uh, Matt Jacobowski who chairs that committee let's make an arrangement down there to and, and especially not a COVID you know if you have shots and all this stuff but anyway I would suggest that we have that meeting in the town absolutely because uh, that may go a little bit further for communications to a lot of people absolutely. in town I, I think there there wasn't any intent by Act 250 I don't believe I think it was the, the hearing being virtual was the hearing itself why they chose to have Susan go to West Rutland, I, I don't, we weren't in control of that, but the, the hearing was a virtual hearing. It just happens that Susan sat in West Rutland for the virtual conference. Now, is there a well, scheduled uh, uh, update? Yeah, so all, as far as notice goes, um, notice was sent out to all abutting property, to towns, to planning commissions, every abutting property owner was given multiple notices and it was also noticed in the newspaper and we went and sent letters as well before we even started the permitting process to all of our abutting neighbors abutting so being a mile or wherever you are i'm not sure exactly well where no you i'm not are, in the butter i'm not in the butter we didn't we didn't send mailers to everybody in town obviously but we sent information to every town planning commission regional planning commission we didn't get anything the plan the planning commission it was sent to carol geary who has not been on any board here for about three years 
and she hasn't been clerk of the Planning Commission for close to 10 years. And she never received anything because I was in touch with her. So the planning and zoning um, boards, uh, planning and select board are statutory parties to any Act 250 yeah. that happens in our town. Right. But we receive no notice and usually there's um, some, I'm not sure who's responsible for this, whether it's the applicant or Act 250, there'd be a notice on our board in there. And I check the mail, even though we haven't met that much during the pandemic. I come in probably bi-weekly and check the mail and check the board to see if there's anything that's pertinent to our zoning or planning. It's just convenient that I'm clerk of both. So, yeah. Gail, yeah. interestingly enough, just to pass this along, this yeah. one has the list of who it was supposedly sent to, and Bronson's on the list, Jeff Biasuzzi's on the list, and Gloria. How is, um, I don't think the emails are correct, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I'm, I'm that's the thing. We don't have town emails. We physically mail everything. Actually, you're on the list. Too. The planning didn't commission get didn't get anything mm -hmm. in the mail, and neither did the zoning board. Huh. All, all I I'd can say, all my that was on emails. the list, which should have included everything. And I didn't get anything did, until Gail we'll get started will, getting a hold of me. Was, was all mailed. You mean by snail mail or email? Mail. Regular mail. Yeah. When I get something, we didn't I receive anything. Notice I just Katie. said I checked, Katie, the, I checked the mail. You haven't gotten Even anything. No, right? I came down on Friday. I don't think so. Two I days after the um, from you. Yeah. Um, hearing I, conference. Hmm. There was nothing until there recently, there. that's when I and started. And I did see that notice. And Gail started. Then I all of a sudden started getting June, information. But <laughs> it was too late. Maybe. Huh. It's okay. We're still statutory. Yeah, I. But I just didn't think any of this gentleman knew was going on, hence my appearance tonight. But it's nice to meet you. So, having this discussion, I think that it's, hopefully, you're going to encourage whoever is setting up the next meeting to meet down in, either here or down in uh, our community center. You Absolutely. talk and contact Matt Jacobowski Bob, you're on that committee. Yeah, I'm on that committee, too. Uh, so. Yeah, it's, uh, i trying to think, the only night that's used once a month, uh, scouts are using it right now. I don't know what else Gloria has got, because Gloria does the uh, scheduling, scheduling too. up there. But, uh, no, and to me, that would be the place to do it, knowing it, which I believe would be a pretty good turnout on this issue. Yes. So. And I, I mean, I can see, and just looking through the changes mm -hmm. I can see that as a town the biggest concern I think we are going to be fielding on these are going to be the change in the crusher yeah. hours mm -hmm. I mean to go from seven to or eight to three is what it has been and to go to seven to five is going to be a big change for that side of town yeah, yeah. yeah no, that's in the act 250 I don't know where that condition is permit and the falls in yeah, I don't yeah, know where that that comes in because I haven't I haven't visited it, it in quite a while. The like traffic, we're not the probably the biggest thing to take away from the permit. We're looking for operational changes mostly and all ballot concerns. And we're um, open door. I've always had an open door to any of our neighbors. We've got we, in my opinion, done a good job with our neighbors because we actually care, um, and that maybe isn't always. The case, but we haven't since we started operating the quarry in 2015. We haven't had any complaints, any issues, and it's not because there wasn't a opportun opportunity for them. It's because we're very diligent about it, and we're not looking to expand truck trips. We're not looking to add additional truck trips. We're not looking to expand the quarry or the annual extraction limits. We're just looking to loosen up some of the operating conditions to be able to be competitive. And one of the things that we've done to, I think, help our relationship with the neighbors is we've taken a very deliberate approach to the impacts that we have on our neighbors. And we've built berms for sound detonating. We're installing rubber liners on the hopper of the jaw, which is one of the loudest areas when the trucks dump into the crusher. So there'll be rubber liners to reduce that sound. We're using electronic, or we're proposing to use electronic blasting methods, which have wave canceling technology for how the shot is detonated versus the historical 
Um, so we're, we're doing, we brought in line power to get rid of the 1200 kW generator, <laughs> which was environmentally not good. And it also was a lot of sound. So we brought in phase three power into the quarry to take that all electric and reduce all of the motors and, and generators that were running. So we've done a lot of things to, to prepare for um, you know, our operations and, and attempt to be as good of a neighbor as we can be. And you know, I, I think that's a part of why we haven't had a lot of, we haven't had any issues with, with neighbors since we've been operating it. Well, I'm just here to tell you that nobody ever sounds the alarm before they blast. It they, never happens. They do. Um, I, I I'm there at my house 85% of the time. You just may, you may not hear it. I know they I do. hear the blast, yeah. and I don't hear the alarm before it goes off. Um, are you on <laughs> the, the call list? I should be, but I so, didn't get a notice. And I've got probably six people that we call and we we've, we've said this to any of the neighbors anytime anybody has had any question we've offered it and I'm glad to call you before we blast to give you a heads up and that's what we do with a number of the other neighbors we do sound an alarm before there's two warning alarms but they're air horns um and i know that it's done every time i well I haven't been there for every blast, but I've been there for no. the majority of blasts, and can that's you, followed very strictly. Can strict you supply way. him with a phone number? Sure. Yeah. 558-8111. State your name. And what was your name? Andrea Sorry. Andrea McCormick. Okay. <coughs> yeah, uh, gladly. Sometimes the closer you are to the quarry, you don't hear as much as a mile away. Oh, I, hear. I hear it. I hear it. She's the not that pressure close. Twenty four seven. You're on almost like a face side, up in the air. So yeah, I, I hear. Uh, I can hear their voices sometimes. That's how far I am. Give you an example on the uh, certificate of service. Andy's dad, who passed several years ago, the trust is on the list, yeah. and the trust mail went to. A granddaughter and never to Andy who lives right there so a lot of people just don't pay attention to stuff like that and in the near future Andy's name will be in place of the trust yeah. so that's another issue will yeah, she be a all, part of that we're, ha we're happy to, to I realize that just, I realize that I'm just telling you if the trust is in it, her address right you know that's unfortunately probably why she received it Right. But we're happy to happy to oh, sit happy. down with anyone and change any of that. Are you, is there Basically, I just wanted to come here and let you guys know what was going on and okay. hopefully you can assign or pick someone to attend the um, merits hearing, which has not been scheduled yet. It hasn't, but it's in the process for the end of the month. It, is some of the emails that are going around now trying to schedule a the hearing. Okay. So, Gil, given the fact that you're on a planning commission, would you be available to uh, if the select board decides they? Oh yeah. I, I, well, I'm sure. I mean, I would. Fortunately or unfortunately, I have too much information in my head for the whole thing. <laughs> Basically, my thing is, like I said, truck traffic and um, hours of operation. And in the past, it was decided that anything outside of those hours, we're all used to those hours. You know, we've been living with it for how many years now? 35. But, yeah, but any, I've been only there 34. <laughs> <laughs> but anything outside of that is, is going to be disruptive to us. And, and Andy has a B&B, &B, and there's other businesses in the area that, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, the camp she's got a area. campground. Yeah, right, yeah. You know, there's just a lot of little things that are going to be affected by this. So we'd like to have someone there that can speak to our concerns. That, that's basically why we came tonight. When well, you I think say the, the reality is that I'm, I'm assuming now, hopefully, the Planning Commission will, since mm -hmm. we've brought attention to it tonight, I hope that they will get noticed. Um, but I, yes, I agree, Gail is a great representative, but I think based on the thought process and based on getting town taxpayer input, I think there really should be one of us there, too. 
Um, yeah, well, well I, I, anyone, I anyone can go. You sure. can go. Anyone can go without. I mean, we're not going to have time to get the planning commission together to send a representative. We're just not going to be able to do it. So that's why, if if he's saying, if John is saying that they're going to schedule it, try and by the end of the month, <coughs> then um, someone needs to be there because we really do have concerns. Is that usually a daytime meeting? In the afternoon or something. Okay. And where, well, I think where we will just it need be? to the Clarendon Community Center. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 I think. Yeah, good choice. Uh, you, good you lesson. Smart, that's what I, like. I was told that you were a smart man. <laughs> good video. choice. You tell us where that's where it'll be. I think we got to. I think we should we, all be we there. Gotta, we got to see when it's going to be. That's, all right. that's then the then first we'll see thing. Who's yeah. available from the board? And I, because you're on. The I would like to do a little bit of. You have um, history. I would like to do a little bit of uh, research on our conditional use permit and where that falls into the Act 250 and how it compares to what they're asking for. If, it's not my, if I'm not mistaken, I think you have to come back to the town to redo the conditional use permit. But I could be wrong. I don't know. It's been so long since I. I was going to say, so, because it would have been a, a initially permitted under a conditional use permit. Yeah, it's permit, an industrial right? use in a commercial residential area. And that hasn't changed. And we had our zoning, I redid our zoning, <laughs> help with Carol Geary and the rest of the zoning uh, back in 11, 2011. And it hasn't been changed since then. And conditional use permit, to my knowledge, has I not see, been this changed. This is why I think it's important for somebody such as yourself who has a history in the Planning Commission and the works of the planning <coughs> commission if uh the date comes and you pass that on on to us i mean we'll see who's not mm -hmm. busy and who's available and yeah and yeah, i think everybody should be there to tell you the truth well it doesn't hurt all right Thank you for so how do we stand yeah. now? Thank you for bringing it to our attention because okay, I, I mean welcome. that's that's a mm -hmm. big thing that I. So when is your next meeting? I mean, are you going to assign someone to be there? We, yeah. So if we have the date by our next meeting, which is two weeks from tonight, yeah, we can determine who. Is the 12th? Okay. Determine mm -hmm. who, or if everybody can go. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Is it going to be before then? You think the next two weeks? I doubt it, but this just. The emails just started going today on what dates were available and it was for the end of July was what they were. Is Katie's email on that notice list? I thought it was. Thanks. Yep. I think it's a good idea if you assign someone today. For only because if they, you're on it. Yeah. If they your put email. it together. But you, it's your wrong, e your wrong emails on there. That's the same thing that happened with Carol. Carol doesn't have an email here. That's my other email. You have one? Yeah. Okay, so you're that, so you should be on it if you get email at that email. That's um, town clerk. Gloria will get it. Bronson's email's on here, and it's the right one. Yeah. yeah. I don't see Katie's on there. No. no. Well, Katie, I'm going to... If, if I get anything, and then I'll just forward to you and the rest of the select board. I mean, if, if, as long as my schedule allows, I'll plan to attend. Yeah, I can tell you that. It's being summer, I've got more availability. So, and I think the board acknowledges that uh, you, with your background on the planning commission and stuff, should be um, a member going. Now we can email Bronson and say this is our suggestion to have you do this and if he thinks it's necessary he'll appoint then that representing the planning commission well the planning commission is already a statutory party to this yeah. but it was now was not notified properly but the same at all and still hasn't been notified but the same token I don't want to speak for the chairman of the planning commission right all uh, right so we we danced that dance with the school actually. <laughs> okay. And I, you know, so I'll see what I can do. I'll talk with. Well, the if if the select board ever decided to name anyone as a representative for them, it wouldn't have to be that they were on the planning or zoning. Correct. It could be anyone that you. Correct. Yep. You do. I. Hopefully, you'll get notice. I hope so. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Let's. Oh, and the other one, other thing. 
Yes. I want to know, I don't know who's responsible for putting an Act 250 notice of application on our board. There's one in there now for a storage unit um, operation that was the middle of June, but your application was in March, and there's still nothing on the board in there that lets anyone in town know that you have a minor application going. And, and I'm not saying that it's your fault by any means. Yeah, I, I, and I don't have, I don't know the answer to that. I know. My assumption I know. is by sending it to the town, it would be posted, but I'm, I'm speaking out of school. I don't know if that was our responsibility to come post it. I don't um, either. And if that's the case, then I'll own that. I don't Gloria know if Woodsy? me or anybody on my team came and posted as it. Far, as far as I know, on the town end, as soon as Gloria receives it or it goes through you, it gets posted right as soon yeah. as we receive it it gets stamped and posted so that's the like without having received it obviously it's not stamped and it's not posted. So i mentioned it to yeah. her and yeah mm -hmm. unfortunately at the same time the town website is being redone i guess yeah and yeah. so gloria yeah. said she'd put things on there and they'd be thrown out so that's another thing that's not working real well with the timing on the town website so i mean that could be the whole thing one reason it's yeah, Invisible. Well, before we had a website, we had the old style. Get it in the mail, post it on the damn mm -hmm. board, and post it yeah. around town. So. Yeah, but I mean, again, the, the thing is, I think the key is if we had it, it would be up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's and the, I realize the, the pandemic issue. played a, a large part of this um, being virtual. <coughs> but still, we should have received something in the mail. We get all the blasting notifications in the mail. That hasn't gone virtual. Unfortunately, I'm not prepared. To, I've got to okay. dig into that. I believe the notices were all mailed and emailed. So why they weren't received? I don't know. I'll, I'll look into that and mm -hmm. follow up with all of you. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Well, thank you for coming, sir. Thank you. Move along. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, thank guys. you guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> we're done here. Yeah, we're done. We're done. <laughs> we're finished. Thank you I just, again. Oh, you're welcome. I just figured that was a good overview for you guys to see what the changes are. Katie, I'm, the information that Gail has, I'm going to put inside the folder okay. so we have it. All right. Public comments. Any public comments? Get to you in a minute, Art. All right. No public comments. Old business. Mill River Unified <laughs> District withdrawal discussion. Would you like to start that, Art? Um, I I have some things to say, but um, and, and I've kind of followed what the procedure is now. I think everyone's aware of what has to happen. Um, but. You know, again, the, the, first of all, it was a very emotional issue for a lot of people, okay? Um, whether this board goes forward with it or not, to me, is, is immaterial. You could, you could go forward, you could have a vote, which would then make the other towns vote and see where it all turned out. Um, but the f but the mere fact that you're considering it is what's important to me, and, and that's why I would strongly encourage participation by someone at the next school board meeting on July 21st at seven at the high school be the first in-person meeting and make it known that because of the things that are going on, this town, this board, is talking about it. And, and the reason I think that's important, I wanna, I wanna just cover uh, one issue that has not been really considered in any of this, um, and that's the uh, MR, MRU policy E4. And I'm gonna read, okay. It is the policy of the district to minimize the risk to the district as it discharges its responsibility 
for properly managing the resources of the school system. This responsibility includes concern for the safety of students, employees, and the public, as well as concerns for protecting the system's property from loss. No new program policy or procedure will be adopted or approved by the board, this is the school board, without first giving careful consideration to the school system's risk exposure. The fact that you're considering or have considered or may still consider withdrawing this town from the district is a huge risk consideration that they have not even thought of or looked at. Okay? That's why, to me, it's important that the board, in some capacity, speak to this, at least in the public, <coughs> in the public input section, session, uh, at that meeting. You have power, okay, as a board. And I'm gonna try to get another town member of uh, town to, to also speak what would happen if this town did withdraw and was allowed to withdraw. What would it do to their town and their taxes and that school? Okay, so that is my look at it. Whether <coughs> you elect to do it or not, that's, that's up to you. But the fact that you're looking is a risk that this school system hasn't, hasn't even considered. I also want to just read a, 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 a bylaw, the MR, MRUUSD, if I to even say it, bylaw number nine. And I'll just read it, and I don't want to take your time, but school buildings. The board will recognize and respect the long-term financial investment and community, community relationships that each town in the Miller River Union High School District number 40 has with its school buildings. The board will encourage appropriate use of the buildings and our grounds by the students and community according to the policies and procedures of the Union School District. Respect the long-term financial investment and community relationship that each town has with the district. Apparently that's not happening here because your relationship has soured to the point where you're looking at maybe withdrawing. Okay. My point is, in my opinion, this school district is not following their own procedure for risk assessment or even looking at how what they're doing, okay, is impacting the community, our community, and others maybe, but I'm speaking specifically to this community. So from, from my perspective, what I really, really encourage the board to do is to have a presence on the 21st to say something about this at that meeting and and make it very clear that this board needs to look at the risk of what they're doing and not only the flag issue but other issues and not sweep it under the rug not ignore it not just pass it in one session and be done so that's my input on it uh chairman um and you know i'm i'm here as long as you discuss it i think um at our last meeting we were i don't want to say we threw our hands up by any stretch but we we could not believe what we had received uh through help from brian collinmore from the state telling us what the legal procedures are first <laughs> we have to have the town vote to get out yep. but that doesn't mean we can get out because we have to have the other towns vote, vote to for us to well. get out correct and that still doesn't it goes back to the state level yeah. and they decide well if it's in the best interest yeah. of not the the town that's having the issue if it's in the best is interest of the union, the union. Yeah. Yeah. and that answer, yeah, yeah. But but what I think we decided um, at our last meeting prior to you asking about a member or a, a, at least two members from the select board going there was that, well, you know, we had raised a little dust and see where this settles and stuff like this. 
I don't, for one person on this board, uh, when they tell us the selling feature of this whole thing was we're going to cut taxes. We're going to cut taxes. It's going to help the students. We'll be better students and all these things. I can ask the treasurer right now. Have our tax school taxes gone down? No. Uh, so that's the biggest bogus piece of this. And if you look at the school ratings of the, when we used to have such good ratings, your children went there. My older children went there. And it, their ratings were really high throughout not only the county, but the state. But that's not the case now. Yeah. And, and that affects a lot of things. That affects more than, this is part of the brisket, and, and this goes beyond your mm -hmm. piece of it, kind of, but there are property values to consider, mm -hmm. there's taxes to consider, there's a million different things that even the perception of failure by a school district, how it can affect the town. You know, tuition students, mm -hmm. um, students leaving the district. The, 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 this past year was down 9 to 10 percent. And that was directly out of the superintendent's mouth. So something's wrong. And, you know, again, from my standpoint, um, if, if the board were to speak to any, any of the things, it would be something that I think would, would just cite the problem and, and magnify that there, there are things wrong here that need to be corrected. Um, I, my older children went to school. I was proud of that school. <coughs> you and I worked uh -huh, to yeah. get football into that school. The kids had, some of the kids that couldn't play volleyball or whatever, <laughs> you know, the other sports that were big kids and stuff, we gave them some way to you know, get the frustration out and be a member of teams and stuff like this. I don't see that now. Well, there was a good spirit, and I don't see it. Mm -hmm. But but again, and, and you know, it goes back to the flag thing to me. And, and I, uh, you know, I I think the division that 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 creates is mm -hmm. is going to do nothing but damage. And I and I just so anyway. That is, I don't want to take a lot of your time. That uh, is one political point of view with the flag thing. I am a combat veteran in Vietnam. Oh, I know. All lives matter. Exactly. All lives matter. So don't uh, I, don't get me going on that. <laughs> the other, but the, the more important thing is, and I talked to a couple folks that have move their kids out of school, up to and including my youngest son, who's 16. Yeah. He's, I, ha, I am paying a good buck yeah, well, to have him go yeah. to school down in Walk Trail because uh, of what I feel is uh, not, being, well, not happening in here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem going to that meeting. Uh, okay. I mean, but mm -hmm. I want the other board members to weigh in on it. And, and, and I would ask that all of you go just as individuals, as towns members, you know, as, as taxpayers, and 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 uh, you don't have to go as a board. You go as a, you know, hey, I'm a concerned taxpayer in this town, and, and what's going on here? This is the first in-person meeting that they will have, um, and it comes on the heels of the decision they made at the last meeting. So. Um, that's kind of what it is. I'm going to speak to the risk management piece. I, I just feel that um, they have they have made a decision in a vacuum. Yeah, they say they discuss it. I'd like to see when. Um, and there's just some procedure. I don't want to get into mm -hmm. what they do. We want to <coughs> stay with what you guys are going to do. So that that's my only spiel, Chair. Well, I'm I'm um, retired law enforcement myself, and. My sister got credit for naming that school. They had a contest. And I think four four students had the same answer. And she was given the credit. They pulled a hat out of a hat. And she got credit for naming that school. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when it was starting out. Um, and I believe all lives matter. Yeah. 
and I'll go, you know, if I can make that meeting, I'll darn sure go to that thing. Absolutely. Well, good, Rick. Thanks. Thanks. I, you know, that, that's my only, uh, the only reason for coming, and I, I just, uh, uh, and I, if you if you move forward with the vote, I mean that's I, I, that that'd be great, I guess. Uh, that's up up to you. But the fact that you're thinking about it, and I think they know this. Yeah. I think they know it. I believe they were sent an email uh, from the superintendent that these things are being looked at. Uh, I think. I don't think on this board it's not a dead issue. I think it's it's a case of we'll wait and see how they react stuff like well, this but I think it's now time to and those words to them next Wednesday would would carry a lot of weight we're waiting and seeing people because it just you know um, I, I don't want to say this stuff's being crammed down our throat but it's being crammed down our throat mm -hmm. and p part of that is the stuff that goes on up Montpelier as you're learning how things get rushed in especially at the end of a session Yes, they do. Uh, where a <clears throat> lot of people vote on something, they don't even realize a particular item gets tied in with stuff. Yeah, I've no been there, I know. Um, no Rob, do you have any? Um, <clears throat> I can be a bit of a polarizing figure just because <laughs> the institution that I run sure. has benefited from the exodus from Mill River. <laughs> <laughs> and the surrounding schools so because of that i am purposefully <laughs> staying away okay. from the issue no, I, uh, totally understandable. Um, but i will state that as a resident of the town of clarendon and as a representative of the town of clarendon absolutely the political nature of the direction that things are headed are, are is extremely concerning to me and i am an alumni of mill river um absolutely. and and uh certainly it's concerning the political nature right. of what's happened. However, again, I have, I made yeah. the decision early on just because my institution that sure. I administrate is sure. benefiting sure. from some of the fallout I in sure this in this area. Yep. Um, I'm purposely kind of staying out of the fray, but um, Good call. but that's okay. where I'm at. Okay. Uh, well, I think one of the things I agree with that. that at least some of us. I'm going to try and make that meeting the 21st. I won't guarantee at this point. I'm going to try and make it. Uh, I think one of the first things that people in town of Clarendon have got to do is get right on our school board members to step up and do what the residents want and not what somebody else wants. That's my thought. As far as the flag thing, I have grandchildren both sides of the spectrum, so I won't even get into that except to say that all lives matter. And that's all I'll say at this point. Yes, I'm totally on board with what I've seen with the education and the enrollment drop and the rise in taxes. Downgrade, should I say, of quality of education that's coming out of there. I did an alumni of the school. I was there. I was brand new. And, and the enrollment drop will continue, and, and some of it's because <coughs> less kids. I get mm -hmm. that, but the superintendent did state that some of it's because of the. When a person from out of state, or even in state, but most of the time out of state, I know, because I'm from out of state. I came here. One of the first things I looked <coughs> at before I settled in the town was the issue of how good the school is yeah, or isn't, absolutely. and. That paid a big price. I had two choices here or Springfield, because I worked for the power company. Yeah, I chose I here that. because of the of the how good we thought our family yeah. thought the school district was. So, if you have a school that has some issues, people are coming coming to look for real estate. To yep. buy a house. That's exactly All right. of a sudden, you go downhill. These are all the risk assessments mm -hmm. that, that need to be considered. Property values. Will houses sell? sell. You have a good family, your kids in the back, and they go by and see that flag on a flagpole. It sends a message. 
some will say good, and, mm -hmm. and, and that's fine, but some won't. Some won't. And, and, and so, if there wasn't a Black Lives Matters flag and a flagpole, it's two flags that we all know and like, mm -hmm. and, and, and it's there. And, and pay attention to all that should feel, be there. I just feel like there's a lot of. I have also gotten calls from sponsors. You know, you go in the gym. There's this fun by so and so. This may start to come out of there yeah. because people have. We want to educate our children, mm -hmm. and that's sad. And, and that should be the prime concern of anybody in that school, anybody that's on a board of directors of that school to educate, get a better educated child out of there. All this other stuff that's going on down there, mm -hmm. I mean, I can't believe it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I, I hadn't... It was not just here, it's everywhere. just wanted to take a non-binding boat. Take a boat. Take a boat of everyone in the district. Non-binding. Mm -hmm. But all, everybody says yes, you can not fly the flag, everybody says no, you can still do it. But let's see what, and I've encouraged this all along, but I don't again. I don't want to take your time. I mm -hmm. I, I just want to bring it up that um, your voices are powerful. Your voices are powerful. What you get up there and 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 say I'm a, I'm on the board of selectmen of Clarendon and blah blah blah. It has meaning. That that's all I would just encourage. I think that those of us on the board that can make it to that meeting should make it, as you pointed out, as citizens, not as a yeah. Now, otherwise, we have to. If there's more than, if there's three or more, then you have to. You're at a meeting. Uh, yeah. You're at a meeting. Yeah. And it's an open meeting law. You can't do that. Yeah. So I think we'll work that out sure. within the board, and I can get back to you. To let you know yeah, that, that's, who that's can make fine. it. I uh, respect what you do, and whatever you do would be a help. All right, Art. Yeah. Thanks for coming down. All right, sir. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right. Thank you, Art. Thanks, sir. Back there. Keep up the good work up there in the Gold Dome. I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Coronavirus local fiscal. Good night, guys. Thank you. Right. Uh, Thank you. Local fiscal recovery Dale, funds. Back, yeah? Nice to meet you, John. Nice to meet you. Thank, Thank you. Um, so these are um, concerning the ARPA funds. Uh, we have to request our funds right. by July 15th. Um, and there's a couple different things you have to do um, before certifying. So that would be accepting the funds and signing those documents, as well as designating an authorized representative and contact person. So have we, you and I had discussion about this, because there's concern that we really do, I guess the question is, do we have a qualifying project or area that these funds can be expended? So, I can speak to that. Um, we currently don't know, honestly. Um, the RRPC has tried to guide us, as they did when, they were, when Ed Bove was here mm -hmm. um, a month or so ago. Um, the VLCT is trying to guide us as to what we could potentially use this for. As of right now, it doesn't look like we do have a qualifying project that we could use this money on. However, with that being said, I've also spoken to not only the VLCT, NIMRIC, um, Wendy Wilton. <clears throat> I've reached out to a bunch of different folks. Sullivan Powers, um, auditing company firm, accounting firm. And every single one of them has said, regardless of if you have a project or not, accept the money take the money because for the sheer fact that even while the money is restricted and only able to be used for certain projects the interest off of that money is unrestricted so even at the end of the day if we aren't able to use the money for any specific projects and have to, and hand, have it to hand it back um, which i've also been told that the state doesn't want the money back and they're not going to want it back so they're going to try to fight to help all of us to figure out what we can do with this money um and the federal government sure doesn't want it back because then they have to figure out what to do with it so yeah. it it seems it's in our best interest to accept this money and hopefully within the next year year and a half hopefully sooner than that months from now 
they maybe see that um, hey rural towns where these restrictions were set for that, that you know rural towns th this money was not geared for rural towns even though we're receiving it sure so hopefully they will um, come to know that uh, or loosen the restrictions a little bit and help us to be able to use this money um, so I'm seeing this on the school side of things all of these bills that came out as COVID relief funds came out you had to initially jump into the pool to get it right and then once you were in the pool it all depended on if they were going to structure it in such a way. In some cases, the delivery of the money is actually preceding any documentation or final documentation on what it can be used for. Yeah. So you have to jump into the pool, get awarded, and then wait for them to finalize all the guidance, and then see if you fit into the categories. Yeah. And what Heidi just said ha I've discovered to be true on the school side of things when they discover that people aren't qualifying enough for it they're redrafting things and opening it up so you can use it on other make things they're, they're trying to make it work yeah. so I think based on that I, I think it's a wise basically everybody's saying you gotta at least jump in the pool and get what you yes. can get is a wise thing what we did um is we jumped in, we got our allocation, we literally put it in a separate bank account, and it sat alone. And when we were able to officially get approved to draw off of it, we drew off of it, utilized it for what it was allowed for, and you were done. Like that, and th that's a lot easier for tracking on the financial side too. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. I think that the the proper thing then in that case is for us to accept and get it and see. And again, the worst case scenario is they tell you you don't and you write a check and you send it back. And it, again, it accrued interest while it was in your possession. And most of, if this is a part of the 1.5 trillion that was passed, which I think it is. Yeah. Um, um, it was one, whatever it was, one point whatever trillion. That's the one um, we're talking two hundred and forty. Yeah. 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 So what it, that that dollar um, award out of that bill, at least on the school side of things, my knowledge is they've opened it up now. Like you're gonna be, you're gonna have all the way up until like September or even after of 2023 to spend it. Like they're giving you two and a half years before it even has yeah. to be. This this it's money has years. <clears throat> huh? This this ARPA money for the town is years. Yeah, yeah. it's multiple years that you yeah. have to use it. Right. Yeah. But yeah. if if we now as treasurer, yeah, and we get this money, two hundred fifty thousand. It was 240 something. All right, well, whatever it is. It seems like, I think. That will be, I'll be put tracking into it separately. Right. And yeah, I was going to ask if you have a different category for that or something. Yeah, I I can do that in our financial system, is track it separately. Percy, so that that is. Yeah, huh? <laughs> so that that is. I just thought you were sunburned. <laughs> Short answer, yes. Yes, okay. All right, then I entertain a motion to have this signed by the. So, chair. I'll make a motion that we accept our allocation of CLRF funding from the U.S. Treasury and that we appoint... Mike would be the authorized representative and Katie would be the contact person. Yeah, that we appoint Michael Klopchen as the authorized representative on behalf of the town of Clarendon and Katie Knopp as the contact person for the town of Clarendon. Second it. Is there any further discussion? That's a lot of money in my pocket, John. Yeah, but it might not be in your pocket, I don't know. But uh, I agree with uh, Robert and Heidi, because Heidi and I had a little discussion before the meeting, because I asked Pittner the same question. Yeah. Yes. She and I had talked and, uh, about it the other day. I, I see it almost as a win-win situation. We may win big, we may win small, but we're going to win. That's what I see. Mm -hmm. Oh, sounds like it. I guess. Yeah, no. Um, because it, 
if you have to send it back, you're at least going to have the interest. Now, I know interest is not real great in the banks right now, but uh, yeah. it'll something. be a few bucks. Well, Maybe either. get cash a pair of boots. Yeah, that amount of money would be something. <laughs> Even money markets, though, are guaranteed now, aren't they? And I mean, it's going to grant, it's going to gain more interest than a yeah, they're typical more than savings. A, CJ, yeah. before we vote on this, I would like to ask you as a public member of this meeting tonight, you have some background dollars and cents wise and you're hearing these conversations between the board and the treasurer. What do you think? Okay. I heard that um, the interest is unrestricted. Mm -hmm. But if you have to give back the two fifty, mm -hmm. you get to keep the interest? Yes. Okay. And what's the interest rate now? I have to look it up. I'm not sure. Uh, in our bank account. I mean, even even when you collect all that money in October, mm -hmm. what's the interest rate? Half percent. Look it up. Okay. It's not real big. I don't have to have it now, but um, it changes. There. Well, sure. Yeah. Um, interest rates go up and down, and they've got no place to go but up. But it seems like it's going to be a while. But there are places that are just as safe, and I don't mean the stock market, but there are banks that pay a lot more than a local bank, even more than a credit union. And, and that's what I was alluding to. Yeah. There, there you, there, there's places you can put it to gain more. Personally, and I think that's what you're asking. I am. <clears throat> uh, you know, I have a, an IRA, a Roth IRA, and an individual account. That's synonymous with a joint account, because I'm single, okay? Yeah. When I'm out of the stock market, I don't move the Roth IRA or the IRA. There's too much paperwork there. Yeah. But the individual is a matter of going online and sending it right to wherever I want. Yeah. Okay. And I always kind of put stuff through Heritage and then there. And there was a bank. I was a Synchrony Bank. is an online bank, and they paid a lot more. And I can find that out as a savings account. You know, some some restrictions, as I recall, you got to do three withdrawals a day, maximum of a hundred thousand dollars each. You know, that doesn't seem too tough. Um, that has a savings account and a, even a checking in there. That's probably less interest and certificates of deposit. I think that at last I knew only twelve months. But the savings account, I I moved my money there. Why not earn more? Yeah, that's and, what I. And it's FDIC, as I recall, too. That's what got me up over four hundred thousand. I don't know. I think yeah, I think they're approved up to. They raised it to five hundred thousand now. I think. I, I thought of, I had thought of, something like that for. I mean, when you receive a slug of money in October, and you could eat it down that slug could go into something like that and you could even possibly if there was shorter term cds you, you know you can kind of do cash flows like a six month cd and yeah. something so, something you'd have to tailor it. but I, i'd be willing to bet i know it's higher than heritage which is where my stuff is at when it's local right and i'm at fidelity and it's I mean, heritage savings account is 0.15%. The money market funds for some time now are 0.01%. You can't get any lower. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And your only risk there is if the money market fund is invested in, you know, they're, they're in a bunch of cash instruments with, with things, and it's called breaking the buck. You put in a buck, you're going to get a buck back, mm -hmm. okay? But back in a savings and loan debacle yeah savings and loan went to hell some of the money was in the savings and loan and they broke the buck they only got 95 95 cents on the dollar okay that's a risk yeah. but i mean the stock market would be out oh yeah oh, absolutely yeah absolutely mm -hmm. all right so i mean i I just picked up three projects that are in the financial nature, and I've been working on one all day. But I'd always thought about some sort of way to 
um, put the unused cash to, to work. I've been dancing around that myself. <laughs> huh? I've been dancing around that myself. I've got a couple relatives at stock market down in the stock market and stuff. So, so, but that's another story. Uh, moving right along. Call the motion. Yeah, there's a motion. I, 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 just a, I, I could do some investigation on Synchrony Bank. I think that. Mm -hmm. but, but that's actually a treasurer um, thing. That's where the conversation should be. All right, all in favor of motion, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Kingsley Bridge. information I sent over email and right there for um, lighting and fire retardant options for the bridge I, um, I think she wanted the final decision mid-September um, but since we were talking about it at the last meeting I figure while it's still fresh I would give you that information um, on that second page Robert I don't know if you're reading it I, I was glancing yeah I highlighted where the original cost estimate includes um, the pricing for that no char and yep. lighting, but the utilities like monthly after that for lighting yep. is on the town. So, so to make this easy, I would make a motion that we accept the original design with the fire retardant and the lighting uh, in the lighting on the bridge um, as it was specced no no additional in other words no i don't want to so i don't want to put in a sprinkler system i don't want to put in a detection system i i want to do it as they bid it is my motion i'll second that and for are discussion. you fine with like the monthly bill after that for yeah obviously we're going to accept the yeah. fact that we're going to be I don't think it's going to be minimal yeah. it's led lighting i mean we're not talking yeah we're talking minimal minimal <clears throat> Who seconded that? I did. Shaking his head no. The headlights can't are straight. You know what I mean? You got headlights on a car. They're going straight. You can't veer on the bridge. You're going to hit the wall on either side. Can't see that, then the person should be, their driver's license ought to be removed. The, I think it's a waste. The issue that we. The waste. The issue we I gotta, hate they pit to get things that got to have a bill for the rest of the time. The issue we got approached with, though, was pedestrian. the multiple people that have come forward that have said they've had issues with pedestrians in the dark. That's what we're more concerned about. They didn't have their headlights on? Can't see? We've been into that bridge, and I've been through that bridge when somebody was on it, when we were over there with, like, the engineers, and couldn't see. When you're in the middle of it, believe it or not. Especially daytime, it's even worse. Yeah. But I like I said, I made my motion. It can die or whatever. I've, and it's I've been seconded. <coughs> yeah, seconded. For discussion. Any further discussion? Well, I have just a little bit of concern with the lighting, the fire retardant. Yes, absolutely. The lighting. We're gonna have to uh, put some power in there. It's there, fairly close, I believe. I don't think it's too far away. But uh, it's going to be an added meter charge bill every month that we're going to have. We're uh, going to have to pay the meter. I mean, that's that's what it boils down to. Yeah, and because the the project is spec for putting the power in. Yeah. In there already. Yeah. But. But uh, also too, I think, and I'm old school in my old but it takes away the nostalgia of the old Vermont covered bridge. I think uh, now you go in there in the daytime, it is a little hard to see a person. But if you go in that bridge at a reasonable speed, you yeah. should have plenty of time to stop. Uh, but I <coughs> have seen them come down the hill off in East Street and go through that bridge quite a lot faster than they should be going. You know. But uh, that's all I got to say. Cash, you got anything? The fire retirement. That. How does that affect our insurance? Does that actually save us 
for not being such a high risk. That should help. I would think that liability wise, that would, it should absolutely help. And I'm wondering what the maintenance is on that. It didn't explain. I did. There's no explanation. No, I mean, that's, that's something that I would think that had to be freshened up every, I don't know, two, three years. I was going to say, you'd think know. they'd have to come in and touch it up. Jay's got a question. Yes. You got an answer. How many fires have you had in covered bridges in the state of Vermont? Usually one a year. Mm -hmm. One a year? You'd burn one up over in Proctor there the last couple of years ago. I know the one in Woodstock. Yeah. Yeah. One going hey, people water. setting these? The one going into Bridgewater, uh, some kids set off firecrackers, not this year, a couple years ago. And it burned, it didn't burn the whole bridge, but it burned uh, some of the siding the guy had put up. So he had to put other siding up, and then it was different shade because the other stuff was already bleached by the sun. So now if you go over there, it, the whole thing is redone. Mm -hmm. I hope the wiring. Wait. I hope the wiring doesn't fail. It causes the bridge to burn. Your your other option too, and we we could push the issue if we're really concerned about the GMP. Is we talked about solar, solar. and having them put in the solar. I mean, River Street Bridge over off a of door drive. Yeah, that's all they solar. Put, that's, that's all solar. solar. That's pretty I mean, good. You yeah. could certainly, and that is actually right here in the report. That you could you could do solar. Yeah. So yeah. if if it's more amenable, I'm willing to amend my motion to state solar. How about the second? I would uh, be willing to change and uh, go with the second. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, I remember I was in on the Zoom meeting when the engineers came and talked. So I yep. have some result. And one of the things was to less aesthetics were lost with a 12 ton as opposed to the 15 or 20 ton and that's what they kind of like correct solar panels up on the roof is that going to be an aesthetic problem sure i mean it's going to be historic i don't that's if that's the place yeah. mm -hmm. if they're here in this discussion tonight and on the west side yeah. Huh? Yeah. on the west side of the bridge but there's a lot of tree well, and, who can see it from either way a lot of tree and shade well, there. Thing well is, middle of the bridge I mean could, the shade I'll and go stuff. look at it it's not well it says that um, it I'm says done. oh well so here it says reduced daytime hours and colder temperatures in winter appear to pose difficulties for alternative power at the site because you got a longer night and longer hours of darkness in the winter shorter to get solar. I, I personally like what you're saying. I don't want to see any electric in that bridge. No. It's just going to be having worked on electric lines over and over and over many years. There's always an issue. And then, of course, there's always a bill. And I, I'm just one member. I'll withdraw my motion. All together. Either. Let somebody else make one. I'll withdraw the second, then. <laughs> <laughs> Have a break. We discussed it. it. I, I hated I hated it. I already knew what was going to happen, so withdraw it before it goes down. How's that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm and and you did make a, a, guy, a point about how many bridges do burn. I believe it's close to one a year. And are they the, set? The, yeah, well, the last one is stone build caught fire in it oh, and they yes, didn't get it out. that one up north. And then they called the, the uh, 911 they said don't move the snow. Don't move the snow beyond <laughs> burn the bridge all the way <laughs> burn holes Why would up. you even call? I mean, is it a common sense? Move the snowmobile off <laughs> yeah. that's burning the bridge? Duh. Huh? I mean, what a stupid call. I don't think we got the right answer. I don't think that's the real story. I, yeah, I can't, can't be either that stupid. Yeah. But I will say, working in a bridge with the engineers, the daytime was actually worse than it when it got darker. But I go across that bridge to uh, find it very hard to believe. I th I personally think, but if we want to take this one piece at a time, I'll make a motion that we do accept the plan for the fire retardant. I think that's a no-brainer. Okay, is there a second yeah. to that? No I'll second to that. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> what what's the expense if you want to make comment on it? It's included. Uh, maintenance down the road. 
That's what. Well, then, if so, that's so if that's what we're concerned about, we need to table this until next meeting and get answers. That's my concern because that that should fall in the fire departments. Oh, jeez. You no, really are going to no. toss a stone now. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not going to go. There's been a motion made. Let me get Matt on the phone. <laughs> there's been a motion made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Did you have your hand up? Yeah, I did. Public? Yeah. Um, well, you said it's included. Included, as I remember, the 12 ton figure? Correct. So the specs that we accepted for the cost associated with that 12 ton that we decided that night, yeah. it states in here that the spray fire retardant is included in the price. Okay. Right. And, and other fire stuff was extra. Correct. Right. Anything not else? Doing any of the extra? No, we're not doing. Well, I don't understand why you're voting, having to vote on fire retardant. We if have to make. Included. They want us to say yes or no. To the fire re retardant. Have you already said yes or no to the twelve ton? Number? Yes, we yes. did. We did that. Which includes fire retardant. Yes, but they want us to I give see what them. You're saying. Their, yeah, <laughs> it seems redundant, but they does. want us to stay okay. yes or no. I see what you're saying. If, if I they, mean, if you if you if you say no to the fire retardant, is the price coming down a little bit? I yeah, I would, would assume. Yes, it would. It's like thirty thousand dollars or something. The other thing is, the I hear what you're saying too, Cash. The town chair. Is like pennies on a dollar compared to yeah. Because you're now's doing it, closer for now's fourteen time months and a few it. other things. Well, that, no, that, that the you're only paying five percent, as I recall from I'm that. I'm talking night. about the financial part. Yeah. Now's the time to do it because of the town share of it, the ten percent. The ten or yeah, I thought I heard five, but or five. Some so some small it, it small number. You can't. This is another no-brainer. Right. You know, for the. Mr. Right. Chairman, I call my motion. All right. There's been a motion made, been seconded. Uh, looks as though uh, it's time to vote. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? After all, I voted for it. <laughs> <laughs> Do it all. <laughs> he must have had something to eat. I tell you. What about no brainer? Can't fake two. Well, is that on? Oops. All right. Okay. Ask them <laughs> some questions, or you don't want to do lighting. Oh, I, I, this discussion sounds like no lighting. Uh, if Robbie wants to, I'm not just, making any more. I, I made my motion, so again, I I saw the direction lighting was going. If somebody else wants to try, go for it. But that's an ongoing thing. <coughs> I don't. I don't. So, if, okay, there's no decision made. Just that is. The, the, no, there uh, is a decision made. It sounds to me. Correct me if I'm wrong, board. Old. That a majority of this board is not interested in having an ongoing bill for lighting in that bridge. It's been like that since right. the whole bridge was built. Yeah. Unless somebody wants to put a water wheel in there. And and 100 percent of the public. <laughs> <laughs> not to mention. The I mean, I think the Guys consensus up. was that if solar was an option, we would potentially put some solar lighting. Is that the idea? I would consider, I feel, I'm not totally happy with lighting in the bridge, but I would uh, give consideration to solar if it was done. I think we should be prepared. I mean, this is obviously a decision doesn't have to be made till September. Right. But the consensus at that meeting of the residents on that side of town, just remember, was they wanted something. Yeah. So just be prepared. It may come up after tonight. Right. Because that was my read on the situation. Mm -hmm. So. All right, moving right along. Universe, yeah, Universe uh, Shop Rags contract. So um, I was able to get a contract for you guys, um, and it's about $25 a month for uh, the rag service. But I just wanted you to note that it's a three year agreement with no price increase. Three. So I don't know how you guys feel about a three year, but I wanted you to be aware. <clears throat> right here. I'll make a motion to accept it three year at the same price. All right. And uh, looks like the board chair. It's only one signature space. It was a motion needed. 
signed by the board chair. Okay. <laughs> Is there a second to that? I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? So, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> 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 didn't get a chance to either. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are we going through? I guess is my question for rags. I mean, are you gonna? Is this I, gonna be well? I penciled it out, and if we could actually buy paper towels, like instead of using the rental rags, yeah, that get washed all the time. And what I could see is. We were actually going to be using dollar wise more. We'd buy two boxes of paper towels per month. Like the shop towels or shop whatever? Towels. Yeah, the heavy equal duty. What the $25 is. And I believe that it's going to be pretty close. I believe actually this is probably going to be cheaper. So we potentially will save this way not some, a lot, but, not some. A lot, but some, some compared to. And then we have less disposal. Okay. Right. Going to the well, that's what I was thinking too. I mean, this is obviously with this way, they're getting laundered, so they're not right. They're they're Correct. cleaning them. Yes, yes. So they're not going to be adding to the landfill. Right. Okay. Three years is a long time. I mean, I just well, then we got to pay to dispose of them at the transfer station, basically, because we mm -hmm. pay by the ton. Yeah. I didn't put that in the equation. Not that they weigh a lot, but. Is there any other discussion? No, my questions are answered. Okay. Is there anything from the public? Nothing. Okay. All those in favor, <laughs> please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Good. Um, what is this uh, assurances of compliance with civil rights requirement? And it has to be signed. That had to do with the ARPA that's funds. That's with the ARPA. That's. It basically means that you're not going to discriminate when you're hiring for whatever jobs you're going to do. Was it it's, signed? It's the Civil Rights Act of 64. Yeah. Pretty much boilerplate. So yeah, it's boilerplate. It's a part of, you've got to just sign that page. Okay. Did we make motion that? It was all a part of the application that we approved, so okay. I don't think you need a separate motion for it. Thanks for the clarity on that, Bob. You gotta sit in this seat. That seat? Yeah, the right hand of God seat. <laughs> <laughs> For the lightning bolt. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing it ain't thundering out. <laughs> all right. Um, Heidi, do you have any reports? I am all set for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Katie, do you have. I think I'm all set as well. Okay, uh, Cash, what, do you have any concerns? Yeah, back, probably should have brought up on my highway report. I just have issues with a couple individuals on a roadside mowing. Um, actually, three of them, one of them had a conversation with him, and after explaining a few things and giving some alternatives, he agreed to let us take back the brush the way so we're not smashing mirrors on the trucks. And now I have the same issue on Coraline Road with a couple of individuals something in you school can, house. So uh, you something you can work out with the property owner? It sounds like it's been ongoing over the years. So. Um, and and uh, what's fair for one, fair for buddy is mowing it back and we do it for safety reasons and these people get off with it. But. Well, as long as it's in the town right away, the town has the authority, in mm -hmm. my opinion, to clear the right away, um, I did get one phone call, no two actually, but one was a longer phone call about uh, how come we're not mowing on the side on the smaller dirt roads, and, I, and then I explained that first of all it's been raining lately, uh, not to mention the fact that our blacktop roads priority right and stuff like this so um, but I said that I would talk to you about it here at the meeting so uh, I tried to explain as nice and be nice as possible um, with the fact that you know there are priorities in town and um, one of the priorities of course is
putting the ditching and stuff in for Walker Mountain Road, as I said before, uh, before they come in blacktop. You, know, you don't want to destroy new blacktop. So that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Paul? I think I'm pretty well set, other than uh, thank you, Cash, for uh, the middle road with the bridge at Scott Brook. What's that? The pothole. Pothole. Yeah, get it taken <laughs> yeah. care of. Yeah, we're taken care of. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Rob, you have anything? Nope. Thanks to Not Heidi. tonight. Rick? Um, yeah, I just want to let you guys, before I contact the Sheriff's Department about this, was um, I really, really have a pet peeve about these people that are mowing the grass into the road. And I followed a motorcycle yesterday going that way on, on the middle road. And it is illegal to mow the grass into the road. And two places I saw the grass was a full half a road of clipping for a hundred feet of grass in the road and a motorcycle went through it and I said, Dear Lord, don't let him slip. He went slow, he slowed down. I will be contacting the sheriff's department to write them tickets up. If they see him, they stop stop the house, they there it is. And it, it's gonna it's gonna happen one of these days. It's the same thing with snow. Uh, somebody's gonna slip on that grass and I don't think people understand <coughs> that it is a danger. Yeah. Grass is slippery. <laughs> it's just as much as snow and even heavy rain even, but 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 uh, doing it on purpose like that. It's actually illegal to Yeah. Make the sheriffs aware. I will make I will be calling the sergeant. Uh public. <laughs> That's uh, Mr. Public to you. <laughs> so it all depends on your frame of mind, but go ahead. I, I know a thousand feet my road frontage. Yeah. Close to it. And uh, you know, going down you know, next to the road of uh, pointing it off the road. Right. And then I, when I come back, I come at the inside. But that's where I got people coming, and I can see them coming. Right. And I don't want to be throwing all them rocks you guys put down into somebody's which And I stop. Right. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of people know exactly why I'm stopped. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They know it. They wave. Right. Yep. They do. Thank you much. But yeah. you can't. You, you know, when you come back, you're going to blow some. Okay. But I find that three or four cars. Vehicles have come through and they've dispersed it. Mm -hmm. Is it going past it? Or? Yeah. yeah. There's enough of them out there that don't. I don't know anything about those are the ones that are after. <laughs> enough of what? Enough of the people that are blowing that grass in there. It's so heavy. This stuff was so heavy, yeah. the cars weren't moving it. Yeah. And, um, and but I mow mine. I'll go three rows in before I turn around and mow the other way. I, I have to make two passes each way. Yeah. I can't. I don't want to go up on the road. Yeah. I'll, I don't I'll make it so you don't have to make no pass and put a ditch right down there. <laughs> There's no ditch necessary down there, you know, and when, when uh, what's his name, the third one back there, Bowen put the ditch through my access. Oh, <laughs> frickin'. I went there the day of Irene, five o'clock in the afternoon, and there was six feet maybe of some grass bent over. The, the water just goes that way. It doesn't go down the road. You gotta be worried. I can't understand why you can't be worried about the other side of the road, which is the uphill side in the ditch. Same guy, I tell you, and I kept my mouth shut till now. <laughs> way to go, Cash. <sighs> Miracles you do had happen. To poke, didn't you? You know, we were getting ready to adjourn. <laughs> just because that sidearm brush hog goes 12 feet, you don't have to do the whole 12 feet. It's gotta have some purpose involved. There is a purpose. I know to keep the brush down, but if I I mow that regularly, thousand feet, that guy doesn't have to put that thing, especially since it's downhill. No, he don't have to down there, but he can keep. He, he need, did he needs today. To put, he needs to put it up and put brush back. He did today. He needs to put brush back. Down the it wasn't the lower bad side. today, but I remember you did it above my house. Oh yeah. I said downhill. I mean, how much snow do you think there is? And if I'm mowing it. There ain't no brush growing out to the road. It didn't grow back, did it? No. <laughs> <coughs> what the, it gets done by the brush hog 10, 12 feet away grows up. But it don't come out 
doesn't come out to the road. It's a waste of time. Whereas across the road, actually, there's yeah. a, there's there's a, only a tiny ditch, yeah. you know, and I'm downhill three feet and and out. There's a tiny We're ditch. We're going to Charlton West here on East Street tomorrow morning. And all, <laughs> and, and all these big trees. East Clinton. They're, they're East the Clinton things in your way. Yeah. We'll put snow. All right. So bring some clothes you know, over okay. As a suggestion, I was going to say, you're cutting a lot of green stuff it? next to the road. Do we? Maybe you ought to do that every three years and cut down at the time you do it. So in three years, you know, junk will grow. But it's still not enough to impede the snow removal. And then, so you've cut down a 30-year time. Do we think about it? Do we still have to have an executive session tonight? Let if you. I have one-on-one -on -one through up between now and two weeks, no. Say that again. If I have a one-on-one -on -one with each one of you within the next two weeks, no. I don't necessarily. No, let's not one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. We'll go make a motion going through executive Contact session. session. Uh, I'll make a motion that we enter into executive session uh, to discuss a personnel issue um, not to exceed 15 minutes. Yeah. Yep. 15 minutes. 